Gold mineralization in orogenic belts, field signs every geologist must know. Gold is one of the most sought-after minerals on Earth, and orogenic belts are among the most prolific zones for gold mineralization. But how do geologists actually spot the signs in the field? What subtle clues in the rocks and structures point to the potential presence of gold? In this video, we're diving into the critical field indicators that can lead you to orogenic gold systems, tools every geologist, prospector, or field enthusiast must understand. Whether you're mapping in a remote mountain range or scanning old metamorphic terrains, knowing what to look for can make all the difference. Let's explore the real signs in real rocks, no guesswork, just solid geological reasoning. Structural controls, understanding faults, shears, and folds. One of the most critical aspects in identifying gold mineralization in orogenic belts is understanding the structural framework of the region. Orogenic gold deposits are fundamentally structurally controlled, meaning that the movement and deformation of the Earth's crust have created the pathways and traps where gold-bearing fluids can migrate and precipitate. In these belts, gold is typically emplaced during compressional to transpressional tectonic regimes, often associated with convergent plate boundaries and mountain-building events. The key structures to recognize in the field include major fault zones, regional shear zones, and tight folds, which are often reactivated multiple times throughout a region's tectonic history. Faults and Shear Zones Large-scale fault systems serve as primary conduits for hydrothermal fluids. When you encounter a zone of intensely fractured rock with slick insides, brecciation, or clay gouge, you're likely standing in or near a fault or shear zone, exactly the kind of structure that could host gold. Orogenic gold is commonly found in second, and third-order structures adjacent to these main faults, where stress was focused and fluid flow localized. In the field, look for Foliated schists or myelinites, indicators of ductal shear deformation. Anastomosing fracture networks, showing brittle deformation with potential open spaces for mineralization. Quartz veins parallel or subparallel to shear foliation, often the main host of gold. Folds and flexures. Fold hinges and flexure zones also play a major role. During folding, rocks are deformed in a way that can create permeability contrasts, opening fractures and pressure shadows where fluids can accumulate. Gold is frequently found in fold hinges, especially where they intersect shear zones, forming ideal structural traps. In practical field terms, this means Trace the orientation of bedding and foliation to locate anticlines and synclines. Look for zones where fold axes are bent or kinked, as these areas often exhibit intense fracturing and veining. Recognize fold thrust stacks, which can create stacked horizons of potential mineralization. Why this matters in the field When you combine these structural elements, faults, shears, and folds, you get a three-dimensional puzzle that reveals how and where fluids could have traveled. In orogenic systems, gold is rarely randomly distributed, it's concentrated along these structural corridors. Understanding the orientation, style, and timing of deformation gives field geologists a powerful edge in predicting where gold is most likely to be found. Host Rock Characteristics and Alteration Patterns Understanding the nature of host rocks and the alteration they undergo is essential when exploring for gold mineralization in orogenic belts. Unlike some other types of gold deposits, Orogenic gold systems are typically found in metamorphosed sedimentary and volcanic rocks that have been intensely deformed and altered by hydrothermal fluids. Host Rock Types Common host rocks for orogenic gold include Metamorphosed volcanic rocks, such as greenstones or basalts. Metasedimentary rocks like greywax, shales, and sandstones. Ultramafic rocks in some settings, which may be less common but still significant. These rocks usually have undergone regional metamorphism, which means their original mineralogy and texture may be partly or fully transformed. However, certain textures such as foliation, cleavage, and original sedimentary layering can often still be recognized and provide important clues. Hydrothermal Alteration Zones Gold-bearing fluids are hot, chemically reactive, and often interact extensively with the host rocks as they move through fractures and faults. 
This interaction causes hydrothermal alteration, changing the original mineralogy and chemistry of the rock in distinct ways that can be detected in the field. Key alteration types associated with orogenic gold systems include Silicification, replacement or impregnation of the host rock by quartz, often forming dense, hard zones or quartz veins. Silicified rocks are usually more resistant to weathering and may appear lighter or more crystalline. Sericitization, formation of fine-grained white mica, sericite, that gives the rock a silky sheen and soft texture. Sericitization commonly occurs near veins and shear zones. Carbonate alteration, addition of carbonate minerals such as calcite or dolomite, which can appear as white or gray patches or veins. Carbonate alteration is often associated with gold mineralization. Sulfide mineralization, the presence of iron sulfide such as pyrite, arsenopyrite, chalcopyrite, and stibnite is a crucial sign. These minerals often occur as fine disseminations or within veins. They can be detected in the field by their metallic luster or by iron staining caused by weathering. Field recognition of alteration. In the field, recognizing these alteration patterns is critical because they are indirect but reliable indicators that hydrothermal fluids have passed through and possibly deposited gold. Some practical field tips include. Look for zones of discoloration for example, rusty brown staining from oxidized pyrite. Identify quartz vein swarms cutting through altered rocks. Feel for textural changes such as softening of the rock due to sericite or carbonate. Use a hand lens to detect fine-grained sulfides. Observe the spatial relationship between alteration zones and major structures like faults and shears. Why alteration patterns are a key exploration tool. Alteration halos often extend beyond the actual gold mineralization, making them valuable guides to the location of ore zones. By mapping these alteration types and their intensity, geologists can prioritize sampling and drilling targets more effectively. Moreover, understanding the mineral assemblages helps reconstruct the temperature and chemistry of the fluids, providing insight into the genesis of the deposit. Quartz vein morphology and associated mineral indicators. Quartz veins are the hallmark of orogenic gold deposits and often serve as the most direct evidence of gold mineralization in the field. Understanding their morphology, the shape, texture, and internal structure of these veins, and the associated mineralogy is crucial for any geologist aiming to identify orogenic gold systems. Quartz vein types and textures. In orogenic belts, Quartz veins can present in several distinct morphologies, each reflecting different geological processes and fluid conditions. Laminated or ribbon quartz veins, these veins display alternating bands or ribbons of quartz and other minerals or inclusions. This banding reflects episodic fluid flow and mineral deposition. Such veins indicate dynamic fluid pressure and temperature changes, which are conducive to gold precipitation. Brecciated quartz veins, these veins contain angular fragments of quartz or host rock cemented by quartz or carbonate minerals. Brecciation results from repeated fracturing and opening of veins, allowing multiple pulses of mineralizing fluids to infiltrate. These veins are often high-grade gold hosts due to enhanced permeability and repeated fluid influx. Stockwork veins, a dense network of small quartz veinlets intersecting the host rock, creating a mesh-like pattern. Stockworks represent extensive fluid percolation and are commonly associated with bulk gold mineralization. Massive and tabular veins, thicker, planar veins that can be several centimeters to meters wide. These are typically emplaced along major shear zones or faults and are primary targets for gold exploration. Associated sulfide and accessory minerals. Quartz veins in orogenic gold systems rarely occur alone. They are usually accompanied by a suite of sulfide minerals and accessory phases that act as important pathfinders for gold. Pyrite, the most common sulfide mineral associated with orogenic gold. Pyrite often forms as disseminated grains or within veins and can host microscopic gold inclusions. Arsenopyrite, FEASS a key indicator mineral frequently associated with higher gold grades. Its presence suggests arsenic-rich hydrothermal fluids. 
Chalcopyrite and stibnite, though less common, these minerals may also be present and point to complex fluid chemistry. Visible gold, occasionally, native gold can be seen in coarse form within quartz veins, often associated with sulfides. Field geologists should pay close attention to the color and texture of sulfides, weathering often causes iron oxides and hydroxides to stain the host rocks orange, red, or yellow, creating gossons which are excellent surface indicators of underlying mineralization. Field Identification and Sampling Strategies Recognizing quartz vein morphology and associated minerals helps prioritize sampling in the field. When encountering quartz veins, take note of the orientation and thickness of veins relative to host rock structures. Texture and mineral banding, which may reflect fluid flow history. The presence of sulfide minerals or iron staining, which may indicate gold presence. Evidence of multiple vein generations, such as cross-cutting relationships or veining styles. Sampling quartz veins and surrounding altered rocks for geochemical analysis is essential for confirming gold presence and grade. Channel samples along veins and grab samples of quartz float or vein fragments provide valuable data. Why Quartz Vein Analysis Matters Quartz veins are the tangible footprints of ancient hydrothermal systems. Their study reveals not only where gold is concentrated but also the fluid evolution, pressure temperature conditions, and tectonic events that created the deposit. Detailed understanding of vein morphology and mineralogy improves exploration success rates by guiding geologists to the most prospective targets. In conclusion, understanding gold mineralization in orogenic belts and recognizing the right field signs are crucial for a successful exploration. Detailed examination of structural controls, host rock characteristics, and quartz vein morphology not only provides clues about where gold may be found but also reveals the complex formation processes of these systems. Every fracture, every vein, and even subtle changes in color you observe in the field help you trace the path of gold. Remember, gold is rarely randomly distributed, its journey is defined by major tectonic forces shaping faults, shear zones, and veins across the Earth's crust. Therefore, patience, attention to detail, and careful fieldwork will lead you not only to potential zones of enrichment but also to a deeper understanding of geology itself. Finally, exploring orogenic gold systems is not just about mining, it is a unique opportunity to unravel the dynamic nature of our planet, its evolution over time, and the remarkable interplay of natural processes. When you head out into the field, don't just look for gold, be ready to discover the story of the earth itself. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on expert geology insights like this. Also, feel free to leave your questions or field experiences in the comments below, I love hearing from fellow geologists and enthusiasts. Join our community here at Professional Geology Club to deepen your knowledge and stay updated on the latest in mineral exploration. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep exploring the Earth's hidden treasures.